It's Somalia's first formal parliament in more than 20 years. One tasked with rebuilding long collapsed state institutions one by one. It started with electing a new president. The Speaker of Parliament believes it has been a good first year. Still we would like to do better. There are some things that we can do better. But as far as whether we have been successful or not, that's up to the people uh, to decide and uh, vet us because we are accountable to the people. Government institutions might have recorded some progress in the past year, but there is little to show for this in terms of security in the capital. Several key roads have been blocked with barricades as Al-Shabaab fighters intensify their attacks. The growing number of attacks and assassinations have weakened the government's narrative of a country with improving security, which has been and still is the biggest challenge facing the government. It's the government officials who have borne the brunt of most of the attacks. Dozens have already been assassinated. Hire Omar is a district commissioner for the Dainile area, just outside the capital. We won't stop working because of the bombings. I've held this position for just three months, and within that period I've survived two assassination attempts. I won't be cowed. The authorities have also taken stern measures aimed at curbing crime. This week they executed a man convicted of killing a journalist last September. It's a move the government feels will help discourage the killing spree. Yet some are calling for even tougher laws to help with prosecuting those suspected of belonging to the armed opposition. We must have a shoot to kill policy for anyone involved in bombings. They should not be taken to prison or even the courts. That is, if we want to save the people of Somalia. But Somalia's leaders say while they want to bring insecurity to a quick end, they have a responsibility to respect and uphold human rights, a dilemma they might have to face for a long time.